Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Inch 130 video tutorial. So as expected, yet again, we're going <laughs> to find some more support reactions. But in this case, we're going to do it for a very special type of structure, which is called a truss. So trusses are very important because you see them everywhere. It's something that you guys should have known kind of before engineering. But a uh, little bit of a secret, it's what you're going to be learning next week, how to solve for stuff inside of a truss. Now, before you can solve for anything inside of a truss, the forces within a truss, you're always going to need the support reactions around it. So if a truss has a roller and a pin, you're going to have to find those support reactions. And that's one of the things I think students, sometimes they get a little confused with the truss and they are unable to find the support reactions because maybe they're just a little confused at how it works. And that becomes a big problem because if you don't have those support reactions right, you're actually going to get the entire question wrong, which is not what we want to do. We want you guys to get all the questions right. So this is just going to be a real short tutorial trying to show you guys how to find the support reactions of a truss. And as you guys will learn, it's actually, there's no secrets to it. No secrets at all. It's exactly what you guys know before. So we're just going to get right into it. You guys are going to see and you're going to, okay, that's easy. And then hopefully you guys will be nice and confident for next week when you guys start trusses. So let's begin. All right. So that what we first see is the question. It's the exact same as before. Wants us to determine the reactions at the supports. So as straightforward as can be, if we look at the supports, if we look at A, we see that there's a nice pin. And if we look at B, we see that there's a roller. So it's actually kind of the same as a simply supported beam. But now I get, a lot less, I get asked a lot of questions. Okay, well, the beam's kind of everywhere. What do I do? Well, the first thing you guys are gonna wanna do, as a lot of you would probably guess, we're gonna wanna draw a nice, beautiful three body diagram. So what I'm going to do, and this is kind of the trick to hopefully eliminate a lot of the confusion is, it doesn't matter where the members are in the truss. Of course, you can draw the members, you can draw it nice, but if I'm drawing a free body diagram for this truss here, this is what I would do. And then, again, this is just what I would do. You guys do whatever, feel comfortable. If you guys wanna draw all the members, that's fine. But actually, I'm gonna draw out the members I'm gonna show you guys. So as we see, our truss looks something like this something perfect so something like that now a lot of students will start getting confused okay it's like uh, it's like a bunch of beams connected together and then i'll start creating some confusion so let's go a little bit further and let's do the support reaction so we know at a there's a pin so we're going to have two reactions at a we're going to have a horizontal we're going to have a vertical so there's my horizontal i already have my vertical we look at b it's a roller so i can have just a one vertical reaction and again, we should label these. So this is at B, so let's go BY. This is at A, we'll go AY, and this one will be AX. So there's my support reactions. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna put my actual external forces on the beam. So we got a lateral load right here of five kilonewtons. So this is when I kinda hinted before when I said that beams very rarely have any lateral load, but I said there's a special thing that you guys will see where it typically has lateral load, that's trusses. So. The truss has a lateral load. We see that there's two external forces also pushing the truss down at these locations. So I'm just gonna draw two arrows like this. I'm gonna label them six kilonewtons. And the other one is eight kilonewtons. So also remember, best thing to do, you're gonna to wanna to dimension everything. So I'm going from here to here. <coughs> we see that each one of these is two meters. So again, my drawing's not to scale. That's perfectly fine as long as we have a good idea of what it is. I think that this is still pretty clear. Uh, on this side, we know that the truss is uh, two meters high. So I'm just gonna put here and here, two meters. So this would be my free body diagram of the truss. So this is as best it can get. But then, like I said, I know a lot of students will start getting confused of just everything that's going on inside the truss because there's a lot of members going on. And next week, you'll actually learn how to solve for each one of those members inside the truss. A lot of fun. You guys will hate it. Trust me. It's actually, it's funny because solving those members is not hard. You guys will think, okay, this is easy, but it'll be one of the more tedious things you guys do in your life because sometimes the truss could have a lot of members and it's just basically particle equilibrium a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of times. So, if you guys are getting confused with how to determine these support reactions because there's so many things going on inside the truss, this is what I recommend. And this is what I recommend. If you guys already know what you're doing, perfect. Just move on. But what I would do 
is I just pretend that this truss is just one big solid beam. So I don't worry about anything going on on the inside. Just fill it in and pretend it's like just a giant piece of steel or something like that. So if I were to treat the truss kind of like this, it's just a giant piece and forget about all the internal members going on on the inside, well then it looks a lot less intimidating. It's just a big giant piece of steel or something like that and you got a bunch of forces on it and you got some unknown forces so you can just treat it like a simple rigid body and go from there. So if we do this, let's forget about all those interior members. Well, like I said, we just have a rigid body has some forces, has some unknowns, but it's okay because we have our equilibrium equations. So we can just go through and start solving things. So if it's a simply supported beam, the first thing I like to do, as you guys know, some of the forces or some of the moments at the pin. So in this case, we have A is the pin. We're gonna have that equal zero. If we look at the beam, that'll cancel out both AY and AX. So for doing this, I'm gonna start with the vertical forces. So we're gonna have the six kilonewtons which acts at a distance of two meters away. And if we look at its rotational tendency, so if I hold my pencil at A and press down where the six kilonewtons is, we'll see it's a clockwise rotation. So this will be minus, and we're gonna go minus eight. So it's, this one's gonna have the same rotational tendency times four meters. And then we're gonna have BY times six meters. If we look at the rotational tendency of BY, we hold our pencil at A, and we push up on the pencil, we see it starts rotating counterclockwise. So this is gonna be positive. So here's another thing a lot of students usually forget about trusses, is the lateral loads. Because typically lateral loads on a beam, they go through wherever you're taking the moment, you don't really think about them. But this truss here, that five kilonewtons at the top, which I'll highlight right now, that'll create a moment because it's at a distance of two meters away from the pin. So we're gonna know that we're gonna have five, times two, and that's my last force, so this is all gonna equal zero. But then we gotta figure out, okay, well, this is gonna be a positive or a negative moment. So if I hold my pencil at A, and I press to the right, we'll see that the pencil start rotating clockwise, so this will actually be a negative moment, as so. So from there, it's really just solving for all your unknowns. And in this case, we only have one unknown. We can find that BY is gonna be equal to nine kilonewtons and we got it as a positive value, so it means that our assumed direction was correct. And if we look at our diagram, we assumed it to be upwards. And if we know that's correct, we know that BY is nine kilonewtons upwards. So I'm gonna highlight that, because that's my final answer. So as you guys will see, <coughs> determining the reaction force of a truss, very, very simple, as long as you don't try and get involved with all the members on the inside. Now, that being said, as you guys will learn next week, there's a very special way to determine all those forces inside, and you will play around with them and have a lot of fun, but uh, just for right now, don't worry about it. Treat it as just a simple piece of steel or something like that. So from here, it doesn't really matter what you do. I like to go some of the forces next equals zero. So if I'm looking at this equation, I have AX, and it's going to the right, and if I look up, I have five kilonewtons, which is also going to the right, so plus five, and that's my last one, so it's equal to zero. So if I solve this, <clears throat> as you guys will see, I get AX is a negative value. But remember, that doesn't mean anything wrong, it just means that AX is gonna be equal to five kilonewtons, but my assumed direction is wrong. So if I look up, I assumed it going to the right, I got a negative value, so it means it's actually going to the left. So I'm just gonna write it like that with the arrow going left. I'm gonna put a box around this. Uh, that's not gonna work. All right, round two, see if this works. All right, perfect. So AX is, oh, this isn't, that just looks funny to me. All right, it doesn't matter. So AX, we found five kilonewtons going to the right, easy. We can finish this off with our sum of the forces in Y equals zero. Some of the forces in Y is equal to zero. So if we look up, our first force is gonna be AY. Well, we don't know that yet, so we're gonna have AY, and we're gonna have minus six kilonewtons and then the minus eight kilonewtons. So minus six, minus eight, and then plus BY, but we already know BY is nine, so I'm just gonna go plus nine, and that's all equal to zero. So. I can easily solve this equation. My only unknown is 
ay and I get ay is equal to 5 kilonewtons. And it was a positive value, so it means that my assumed direction of ay was correct. And if I look at ay right there, I have it pointing up. I know that that's correct, so we know ay is 5 kilonewtons in the upwards direction. So I'm just going to box my answer real quick. And that's it. That's how you find the support reactions of a truss. So it's, you guys are going to look at this and go, oh, that was the simplest video ever. And yes, it is. But uh, And this video was to help those, those couple students that say, okay, well, there's a lot of forces going on in the truss. I don't know if I should include them or not include them or what do I do with them. And for determining support reactions, you don't worry about them. You don't worry about them. And the, as you guys will learn, the only time you're going to worry about what's inside of a truss is when you're cutting into those members. And when we're determining support reactions, you should not be cutting into those members. Later on, you guys will learn how to cut into those members to determine the forces inside of those members. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a real treat. You guys will see. But uh, for now, we're not going to worry about them. We're just focusing on the external supports. So that's how you determine the reactions of a truss. Uh, I think from now, we've covered all the kind of unique scenarios you guys will see with support reactions. So for our last example of the week, uh, next video, we're just going to go through kind of a more practical example on how to solve kind of a beam in equilibrium where that has support reactions. So just something kind of nice, simple, and then you guys can kind of see what a question would be like. But again, this is supposed to be easy. Don't overthink it because this is just a small part of what's to come. So thank you all so much for listening. I'll see you guys in the next video.